Hello, David Spark here for DICE, and I am at the conclusion of the Silicon Valley Code Camp here in uh, Foothill College in Los Altos, California. Uh, this is two solid days of coding, and also uh, sessions that are of interest to coders. 2,000 people showed up to this event, about an 80% increase from before, 196 sessions on everything for developers, coding, and things they could care about during that time. Uh, all the major software developers were here, uh, or companies offering uh, options for software developers, Google, Oracle, Sprint, Microsoft, Yahoo, and rarely do you see an education environment with all these major players playing in CodeCamp being the fifth one uh, you're seeing this happening here. Uh, let me tell you about what was most popular here. HTML5, really popular. All the sessions for HTML5 were packed. It crosses all development areas, and pretty much every developer is going to have to know HTML5. Uh, as you might imagine, mobile was very, very big. All the development areas for mobile were big. iPhone, Windows Phone 7, uh, Android also as well. In fact, the Android sessions were jam-packed, all of them. And some of the things that came up in the Android session that not a surprise. I talked about this on uh, my coverage of App Nation. People are concerned about the different flavors of Android, what version of Android you're developing for, and the fact that you have to develop for different handsets that have different resolutions. Um, but not only that, the carriers, they add their own things on top of Android because they need it for the different functionalities that the phone have. For example, a front-facing camera, uh, believe it or not, there is not information within Android to denote landscape and portrait for the camera on the phone. Well, if you have a front-facing camera, you are almost definitely shooting it in portrait mode. Um, and that is something that often the carriers, with when they have those specific handsets, add it on. Um, one question that a lot of people were asking, hey, can I build something once and have it work across all three platforms? And the answer is, don't try it. Because they all have different requirements and different user guidelines, and you simply won't be accepted if you try to develop from one and use the user guidelines from one on top of another. It, it just, unfortunately, it doesn't cross over. Uh, yes, there is a lot of complexity in mobile, especially in the Android area right now. And a lot of people are th seeing that as a negative. But smaller developers should look at this as a positive, actually, because major companies may shy away from niche market products. They won't scale, won't be worth their time to go in there, and smaller developers can go after those niche markets. Uh, Google had a lot of sessions here, a lot of stuff that had nothing to do with search, uh, like they showed a lot of stuff on Google App Engine, the uh, Yoohoo, uh, Yoohoo, YouTube, hopefully Yoohoo sometime soon, but YouTube integration and the prediction engine as well. And then lastly, um, there were a lot of sessions that had nothing to do with development at all. Um, but they were of importance to developers. And these were really the universal sessions. One was a great session on networking for developers because developers have to you know, rely on the network. So there were three things that the instructor talked about there. He talked about uh, the need for name resolution. How do you convert a web address to an IP address? Uh, can you connect to a port? And how do you trace packets across the network? Um, another big issue was the user interface. Actually, there are a few sessions on user interface, and those actually were extremely popular. Um, things you need to know about user interface is all content that is presented on the screen is information, but they all have different levels of relevance. So, you know, like the headline may have high relevance where the line underneath it has low relevance, but it is still information. And you need to understand that, that people are processing that information. Also, how easy are you making people to get to your information? Clicks, how far is the mouse traveling as well? And then very lastly is how confusing is this whole experience for the user? Are you making it confusing for them? Because how much brain power do they need to use to really understand what's going on? And lastly, which is of importance to everyone who is inventing a new product, there was uh, a good legal session about uh, what the do's and don'ts. And really the basic rule is, if you're trying to protect something, if you're trying to get a patent on something, you can't broadcast it to the world. Unlike what I'm doing right now. So for more session information and more videos and interviews that I did with people, go to the uh, Dice Out Loud YouTube channel or go to the Code Camp blog. We've got all the information there. Uh, lots more is going to be coming up uh, day after day after day. So just keep a good eye out for it.